This video is the second video in the series of simplifying radicals, and I'm going to focus on just trying to get rid of a denominator that's a radical, because there's the two main rules are that you can't have a um, perfect square factor in your radicand, and then the other one that we're going to work on right now is you can't have a radical expression on the bottom of a fraction. So um, to do that, we do something called rationalizing the denominator. So let me talk about that for a second. Let's start with this. Um, any number over itself, so let's, well, let's start with this, 7 over 7. That's a number, the same number over itself, that's equal to a 1. And you can apply that same idea to a radical. Square root of 3 over the square root of 3. Since they're the same number, they're equal to 1. And if you multiply anything by 1, you really haven't changed the value of it. It's still the same amount. But we are going to be using this concept to simplify these. And what you do to get rid of a radical on the bottom is um, whatever that radical is, that radical expression, so for example in problem number one it's the square root of five, I'm going to multiply the fraction by that value over itself, or that radical over itself, which is the square root of five over five. And by doing that I haven't really changed the amount, I've just, I'm going to make it look different and it's going to be acceptable. When you multiply fractions you multiply the straight across the top, and the product of 1 times square root of 5 is just square root of 5. And then you multiply it straight across the bottom. Well, here's where I just want to kind of take a side, little side trip here. The square root of any number, such as, uh, let's pick 3. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is equal to the square root of 3 times 3, or 9. But um, that's going to end up just being 3. And this, the general rule when you're multiplying the same radicand, that's this number, it, whatever that number is, let's call it x, if you multiply it by that same number, the product is going to be x. Okay, so what happens when I multiply the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is that I'm really getting the square root of 25, although I'm not going to write that each time um, because the square root of 25 is 5. I'm just going to go ahead and make, show the product out of the 5. This is simplified, and it's okay, because it's all right to have a radical expression on the top, the numerator, but it's not okay to have it on the bottom. So it's just one of those little math rules. It's kind of like rules in grammar. Now, number two, here I've got a number on top, 6, and a square root of 7 on the bottom. It's the square root of 7 on the bottom that I want to get rid of. And so I'm going to multiply this whole thing by the square root of 7 over the square root of 7. And all you need to do here is, there's really nothing fancy here. I'm not going to turn that into a 42 or anything. It's just simply, um, this is a non-radical times a radical. So it's going to be 6 times the square root of 7. It's written like that. But on the bottom, I've got square root of 7 times the square root of 7, which does give me does give me a 7. And that's the answer to that one. If a lot of people put like a 42 here or something strange, you just, you just put it together. Number 3. Again, we want to get rid of the square root of 3, so that's what we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by, square root of 3. And that's going to give me simply 5 times the square root of 3 over 3. And I can't simplify any further than that. That's it, right there. Now this is where I kind of have to make the comment that the, the saying that, or the basically identifying what you're doing as simplifying a radical, sort of is a misnomer because you can't, you really have something here that looks more complicated than what you started out with. Um, you're just writing it in the proper format. So um, if you want, if you think it's, you're making it more simple, you're really not. So sorry for the bad news. Okay, number four, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of six. So that's the radical we want to get rid of. And I'm going to get three times the square root of six on top. I'm going to get six on the bottom. Now in this particular case, because 3 and 6 have a common factor of 3, I can simply cross those off, and really I'm dividing both by 3 and make that a 3. I'm sorry, 2. <laughs> Erase that. I need to say 2. There we go. 2. Okay, just like if I had 3 over 6, I would, that would simplify to a 1 over 2. So this is a 1. I'm going to go ahead and just rewrite this as square root of 6 over 2. And we don't write an invisible 1 leave that blank. Okay, next one. 
I'm going to multiply the top by the square root of 5 and the bottom by the square root of 5 and get 2 times the square root of 5 over 5. And that's it. Let's just circle the final answer there. And last, this is going to be, um, there's a several ways we could solve this one. I think I'll just show it both ways. First, I could try to simplify the radicals by getting rid of the perfect square factors first. So let me um, show that first. I would multiply, or I would simplify 25, or, sorry, 50. I would turn that into 25, a square root of 25 times square root of 2. And 21 doesn't have any perfect square factors, so it's just a square root of 21. The nice thing about this is that I can turn that into a 5. So just to kind of clean it up, we have square root of 21 times 5 times square root of 2. Now, I still ha cannot have a perfect square. I, I'm sorry, I cannot have a radical on the bottom. So I only need to get rid of the square root of 2, though. This part, the 5, is fine. So I'm going to multiply the whole thing by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. And what I'll get is uh, 21 times 2, that's 42 over 5 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2. Well, these two right here give me a 2. So I have 5 times 2, which is just 10. And you know, I'd want to think again about 42. Think of all your perfect squares. You've got 4. Well, 4 doesn't go into it. 16. Well, 16 doesn't go into it. Um, so there really aren't any perfect squares that go into 42. And this is as um, simplified as you can get. Now, another way you might want to do this one is room up here. If I didn't recognize that I had a perfect square in that 50, I could just multiply both the top and the bottom by square root of 50. And then I'd get 21 times 50. And I'm actually going to work this way. So I'm running out of room. 21 times 50, well, 5 times 21 is 105. So that's going to be the square root of 1050. And on the bottom, 50 times 50, well, 5 times 5 is 25, so it's 2,500. And then since hopefully you recognize that the square root of 50 times the square root of 50 is actually 50, I would cross this off and make it a 50. And then I would, I would recognize that 1050, um, I know it definitely 25 goes into it. And I would be thinking about how many times that does go into it. And I think it is well, 40, 25 going to 100. And there's 10 of those in 1,000. So that's 40 plus 2 more to make up the 50. So I know that I'm going to have this number be uh, square root of 25 times the square root of 42. And then I could just simply cross off the 25 and make it a 5. And... I'm going to work this way now. I'm going to end up with 5 times the square root of 42 over 50. And from that, I can go ahead and cancel out. Because it, there's a common factor of 5. I can make a 10. Turn this into a square root of 42 over 10. And this number is the same as, to kind of connect these two answers here, this number on the bottom. It's got a two different ways. And uh, that just kind of proves that there's, when you're simplifying radicals, sometimes you take a different route than someone else, but you end up with the same answer. And thank you for watching this video.